welcome to the demonstration. Today we're going to um, react magnesium ribbon with the oxygen in the air. Um, let's go through really fast and we'll talk about some of the tools that we're going to use. Um, so in the beaker here, we have some magnesium ribbon. That's what we're going to react. We're going to use tongs in order to hold the magnesium ribbon so I don't get third degree burns. Um, we're going to use the Buddy Bunsen burner right here to ignite the magnesium ribbon. And in the end, we're going to put the um, burned magnesium ribbon into this watch glass so that we can identify um, what the products of this reaction are. All right. So without further ado, we'll get started. First part of this is making observations. And so I'm going to grab a piece of magnesium ribbon. So let's look at what would our reactants be. These are the things that go into the reaction. Um, they're called reactants. And I'm going to use this piece of emery cloth right here just to kind of shine up the end of my magnesium ribbon because it gets oxides on the outside of it, which means that the magnesium just kind of naturally reacts with oxygen in the air in order to form magnesium oxide. Pretty much all metals do this. Gold is the most slow metal to do this, but all metals really do this. Um, they all get oxidized, meaning that they combine with oxygen in the air to form some sort of an oxide. So iron, when it combines with oxygen in the air, it forms iron oxide. You might know that as rust, right? But it happens right away. Now you'd say, oh, well, metal doesn't rust right away, but it does. It starts immediately. And you can't see it because it's like one atom thick, right? It's barely a coating on the outside. And then it slowly happens more and more and more after that. Um, and then magnesium is a little bit more reactive than iron, so it's going to happen a little more quickly. Silver does the same thing. We call that tarnish. Um, and you guys can see I got probably a little bit on my hand here, but um, this magnesium is a little bit shiny now. And my fingers are definitely dirty from the oxides that are on the outside. Um, but this is my magnesium. So let's go through our observations, and I want you to take them in a very specific way. All right, so first, let's take a look. Is it a solid, liquid, or gas? Obviously, it's a solid. Um, what color is it? It is silver in color. Um, I'm good with silver as a color. And then we can say, um, is it solid, opaque? Sorry, let me try it again. Is it opaque? translucent, where you can kind of see through it, kind of not, or is it transparent, where you really can't see through, or you could see through it all the way? Well, this is definitely opaque. Um, next thing, is it bendable? Yes, okay. Is it brittle? No, all right. So it is called malleable, M-A-L-L-A-B-L-E, and I can just keep bending this back and forth, back and forth for a long time before it it might break eventually, it may not, okay? So magnesium ribbon is definitely malleable. If it was brittle, it would be like glass. Have you ever tried to break glass in half? Now, here I have a glass rod right here. If I tried to break this in half, it would just snap immediately, right? And I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna break glass. All right, so the last thing would be, um, is it shiny or dull? And this is shiny. I had to shine it up a little bit because it had an oxide coating on the outside, which is not metal. Um, and therefore it was kind of dull, but now it is definitely shiny. Um, you guys can see how it kind of catches the light as I move it around in the camera here. All right, my next step is to um, go ahead and make observations of the other reactant in this. Well, it's oxygen in the air. So it's clear, odorless, transparent gas, right? Um, we can't say it's shiny or dull or any of those things because it's a gas. So that just kind of right away, clear, odorless, colorless gas. Okay. So let's go ahead and without further ado, really get this thing going. So I'm going to go ahead and burn this magnesium. I'm just going to put it in between the tongs here. And then I'm going to go ahead and light my Bunsen burner. So I'm going to have to grab it again. And I'll use the Bunsen burner because oxygen in the air is already bonded to itself. So the oxygen in the air bonds to other oxygen molecules, and we're gonna learn about a diatomic molecule today. Um, oxygen is one of them. So there's a few diatomic molecules, oxygen's one of them, and we're gonna learn about that one. But it starts out as oxygen and oxygen bonded together. I have to be able to break that bond, and I need to heat up the metal enough in order to have enough energy to get this reaction going. So I'm gonna use the Bunsen burner to make that happen. 
maybe. There we go. Okay, so got my Benson burner. Turn my gas on. I'm going to turn it on here at the Benson burner. Get that going. Not throwing that in the sink. I'm just putting it on the counter. And I've got my Bunsen burner going. I'm going to adjust my flame. That looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit more gas. All right. That looks fantastic to me. All right. So now the next step is to place my metal here in the tongs and grab a small part. Now, this is going to get really bright because one of the signs of a chemical reaction is light being given off. So we will go ahead and do that. And I'm going to look away because it's way too bright for me to look straight on. All right. Now, pretty bright, definitely. And I'm going to go ahead and put this into my thing here. Now I'm going to do another one um, just so that I have enough magnesium left over. I might even do a couple of them here at the same time. These are kind of small. Um, just so I have enough magnesium left over at the end. So, or magnesium oxide, I should say, left over at the end. So you guys have something to see on the camera. So what are we making? We're making what's called magnesium oxide. Super bright, isn't it? So you can imagine this being part of a firework, right? So those fireworks that they send up and then like they're just white and they kind of trail down. Some of those are my favorite, especially the ones that really last a long time. Let's see if I can get this to go a little bit more. Maybe I have so much magnesium oxide on the outside, I don't think I'm going to be able to get this to react. Okay, I think we're dead. All right, so like I said, quick reaction, right? Easy to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my Buddy Bunsen burner now, and then I'll turn it off with the gas here. All right, last thing is some observations. Um, so during observations, right, what did you notice? A very bright light. Um, I think that's pretty much all you could notice at that point in time. I don't think you could really see anything else other than an extremely bright light. So I have no idea what it looks like when it's reacting because it's just an extremely bright light. That's all that I see. All right, now I'm going to hold this up, see if I can get rid of there. There we go. That's probably about the best that I can do for you guys. And let me grab my tongs here so I can kind of poke at this. Um, I could use my glass rod here, I guess, too. And so... If I kind of poke at this, you guys will see that as I poke at it, it's very brittle. All right, so let's make our observations again. Um, it is a solid white powder, right? Um, can I see through it? No. So it's opaque, O-P-Q-U-E, O-P-A-Q-U-E. I don't know, you know, I forgot a letter in there. So we have a solid white powder opaque powder. Um, it is brittle um, because as I just barely touch it, it fractures, it breaks into like smaller pieces, right? So notice how hard I'm touching it. Now I'm not breaking the glass below it, am I? I'm just barely touching it. I'm not breaking this glass rod and I'm not breaking the glass below it. So you can imagine how brittle this is. If you know how brittle glass is, this is more brittle than glass, okay? So very brittle, just breaks apart right away. I suppose if we had a thick chunk of it, then it might be a little bit more sturdy, obviously. But um, here's some leftover magnesium right there, a couple little pieces here, but all of that. Now, one thing that you want to really make sure is that um, if we were to put this in water, it would be um, highly alkaline. So it would be like pH maybe 8, 9, 10, something like that. Um, definitely could be dangerous if you uh, got it in your mouth or something like that. So I'll be sure to wash my hands, certainly before I eat lunch or anything like that, okay? So again, we have a white uh, powder that is a solid, it's opaque, it is brittle, um, and it is dull. I forgot that one, it is dull, all right? So it's not shiny, it is dull. All right, you guys have any questions on the observations? That was easy, right? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. I think we have all the observations we need for right now.